Like you're being messy. You're being messy. You're being really messy. Um. Hey guys, before we get into the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Surfshark VPN. And before I go any further, I just want to address something. A lot of people in the comments are saying this is a whale costume. It is not. It has one of those like little fin things. It's a shark. I know it doesn't have teeth, but it's a shark. Also, I added a little hat. So to give a quick rundown, Surfshark is a VPN provider which allows you to surf the web securely and privately. Which means that unlike other VPN providers, Surfshark does not sell your data to other companies. But another cool thing about VPNs is it allows you to change your location virtually so that you're not bound by your location's internet restrictions. With just a couple clicks, you can change your location to almost anywhere in the world. A lot of people don't know, but different streaming services have different catalogs for different countries. So if you want to see what the Netflix looks like in the UK or Australia, or let's say you get that pop-up on YouTube that this video is not available in your country. With just a couple clicks, you can change your virtual location to make it appear that you are in a different country. This way, you have the freedom to roam and you aren't bound by your location's internet restrictions. And all the while, your data is being protected and not being tracked or worse, sold to other companies. In this day and age, VPN providers are almost essential. So if you are going to choose one, why not one that has tens of thousands of positive reviews and one that supports your favorite creators like me? So try it for yourself by going to surfshark.deal slash maddie or use promo code M-A-D-D-Y at checkout and get 83% off and three extra months free. And with that, on to the video. Hi guys, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight, the best talk show in town because Z-Way got canceled. Joining me on the show today is a special <laughs> guest from the most recent season of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> The newest winner of the Golden Boot, Miss Selena S. Titties. Yes, my Golden Boot sister! Yeah. <laughs> you know what it was? I think people were too, um, they knew she was going to be coming for them. So mm. then they would fight back and it lost its, like, you know, its flair. Because we yeah. loved watching people, like, crack under pressure. Yeah. Just like Lucy Lou Duke. No, I'm just kidding. Stop. <laughs> You know, sometimes you just have to let loose, you know? Period. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, Miss Maddie. Hi, welcome. How are you enjoying Vegas? I love Vegas, um, or as I call it, um, Vegas. Oh, Vegas. Um, yes, Vegas. Um, you know, it's cute. I love Vegas. A lot of DL guys, so... You know, oh, me. me. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But yeah, it's very... Uh, the straight boys love a little... Uh -huh. um, especially, yeah, if you're at the Luxor, say hi. Room 19, 208. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, this is going to come out later. <laughs> yeah, but you know. Oh, poor family's going to have a DL guy knock on their yeah. doors. Dude. But she does post her show dates, so you can fly around, come see her. Mm -hmm. I love DL ping guys, my favorite. Yeah, her door is always open, as is she. So, <laughs> we're going to jump into this interview, get to know you a little bit better. Alrighty. Yeah, let's see here. Do you really have stuff on there? Oh, I got. Oh, my yeah, God. Content. This is professional. Okay, so are they the same questions you use for everyone, or are these like No, they're, they're, they're specific, yeah. Wow. Some of these questions you probably already answered before. Some of them are reworded versions. Some are new questions. And some are just like, just moments where I am just mean to you. But it's fine. Okay, you know? let's do it. So before we get into the interview, I just want to break down your drag name. Because when I first heard your drag name, I thought Selena S. Titty. It's like Saline Titty is like a boob job. But someone else told me that your name, S. Titties, is a play on STDs. Yeah, someone said it's a reference to Selena Quintanilla. Mm -hmm. Let's, to set the record straight for once and for all, explain your drag name. Break it down for me. Yes, so it's all of those things. It's um, saline tits, basically. That's why I spelled it S-A-L-I-N-A, because saline is spelled mm -hmm. that way. And I was like, I also don't want, like, um, Selena's father is, like, notoriously known for, like, coming for money. So I didn't want him to come for my coin. So I was like, if I spell <laughs> Selena different than Selena Gitania, yeah. I should be fine. So Selena and then titties, saline tits. And then STDs. So if you say STDs with a little Spanish mm -hmm. flair, STDs. And so then, um, yeah, I had hashtags like, go, she's going viral, catch her, you can't get rid of her, mm. STDs. Actually, my first audition tape for Drag Race season 11, that was my whole brand on my tape. And then when I didn't get it, I rebranded to just titties, tits, um, little nips, mm -hmm. itty bitty as titty committee. Yeah. And um, so now it's just S tits. Selena so S titties was like your first drag name you went with, and it's the one you've had since then. Did you ever think of changing it to something, just something else in general or something more appropriate like, Yolanda S. Titties, or just like, just a different drag name in general. Yolanda, never, that's mistress. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, no, this actually, this queen, her name's Anjanu in LA. If you've ever been to Tiger Heat, 18 and Up Club, she works the door there. She's been doing it for years. She was like, you should probably change your name to something more household. And I was like, like what? She's like, Selena S. Like, drop the titties. Like, you're never going to get booked anywhere. And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want the titties. 
<laughs> I love that you like titties. <laughs> like yeah. real tits. I honestly, I feel like everyone does, really. That's what I'm like, saying. Like to some degree. So why would I change my name away from titties? Everyone loves titties. Yeah. Even gay boys want to touch some titties sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? Fortunately for you, you did not die a local girl. You made it on RuPaul's Drag Race. And you've now, at the time of filming this, you've been a Ru girl for about four months now, officially. How's the journey been for you? What's it been like? Ooh, it's been fun. It's been really cool to feel the fan support and love because that's not something you anticipate before the show. You know what I mean? Mm. Like you sit around, you're like, what's my edit gonna be like? What's gonna happen? But then the fans, you know, I didn't, for me, I didn't even think about that. So the fact that they're all coming to bat for me, they're on my side, they're mm. part of the committee, it just feels so good. And that's been my saving grace through this entire journey. Yeah. <laughs> they're all supporters of the itty bitty S D committee. They're like a good training bra. Support yeah. <laughs> of the titties. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the nips out there. And then what you call your fans, the nips? Yeah, the little nips. The little nips. I'm the titties, they're the little nips together. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I, love, like, I love like your entire being. It's just like anything based around titties. It's just like you legally own it. Right? Yeah. It's so cool. It's like whenever you saw Janet Jackson's Super Bowl, like she like you're oh. like she, she had to send I, you royalties. I think that's when I got uh, actually bird. I think that's when I created it. So obviously she wasn't the biggest fan of it back then, but what do you think Miss Garfi would think of you right now if she saw you today? Miss Garfi? How do you know about that? I did my research. You did your research? This is a you professional. You are like Joey Nolfi. Oh my God. <laughs> so Miss Garfi was my kindergarten teacher who was that when she, she was the one who told me to stop, to take off the Cinderella dress because mm -hmm. I was prancing around in a Cinderella dress from the costume bin and she said, sit down. And I think today Miss Garfi is probably dead. Oh. <laughs> so, hi bitch. She's probably haunting me wherever she is. <laughs> No shade. My my condolences to Miss Garfi's family. She Maybe. She died a local girl. Okay. She, she died a local girl. Not that. <laughs> so, well, I'm proud of you because a lot of people don't know this. You've actually been sober for almost like 12 years now. Almost. 11, I'm at 11 11 right years. Now. Yeah. Because yeah, you started when you were 21. Not to out you for your age, but most of the Drag Race fans can't do math, so you're good. Mm -hmm. But being like a D-list celebrity, you obviously are now, especially like in nightlife, you're offered... Probably a lot of stuff, like more so than ever before. Has it been like hard for you? Have it been more of a struggle with your sobriety? Or have you been like fine because of how long you've been sober? Yeah, I've been sober for 11 years. It's a long time without mm -hmm. a drink or a drug. And I've seen a lot of girls do all the drinks and drugs backstage, all the things, party, party, party. Um, so I'm used to it. I'm used to not having to have it. Um, it's interesting because at meet and greets or like on my Instagram, people are like, do you smoke blunts? Like, I'm gonna bring you the biggest blunt. We're gonna smoke the blunt together. And I, I feel more bad being like, oh, I don't do that. And I feel like their heart breaks, you know what I mean? Mm. But it's the, that's what they they live for. Yeah. So I feel bad declining them. Or when someone has a shot and they're like, drink it during my number, I'm like, I don't drink. <laughs> I feel bad for them. Cause they just want to party. They just want to yeah. be like, you know, adding to my experience. But unfortunately I don't do that. So I feel bad for the kids who want to partake with me. But I'm like, give it to someone else. I said, go give it to that girl over there. Look at her mm -hmm. and her wig. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people at the bars and clubs, like giving shots is like people's love language. Yeah. But if you're at a Selena show and you want to give her a shot, just give it to one of the local girls instead. Because they, me, they mm -hmm. probably want it more and they definitely need it more. Because, Period. Yeah. And so. bring me Hot Cheetos instead. Like, I love that. That's my favorite thing. They, yeah. bring, they bring me bags of Hot Cheetos. I leave with like four bags. I sometimes uh -huh. just leave them for the, the, the local girls there. You should honestly get a sponsorship at this point. I'm waiting, Cheetos. <laughs> Is either a bra sponsorship or a Cheeto sponsorship, something. Yeah, but. I think she's in the works. I think we'll put yeah. it. Miss Garfi, you hear that? Make it happen. <laughs> she's gonna offer me now that I'm that I'm on Drag Race. Right. But when I was a local girl, she didn't give a fuck about me. Right. But now you somebody. Correct. Yeah. D list. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. You don't no, recognize. No. Period. Yeah. It's, it's one thing I had to explain to my grandma when I got on Drag Race. She's like, "So you're like famous now?" And I was like, "No." I said. The majority of gay people and every girl with blue hair knows who I am. Mmm, very but specific. No one's clocking me at Walmart. It is, you know, yeah, honestly. Yeah, thousand percent. You've been in the meet and greets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, blue hair girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like because you are sober out of the venues, there's so much exciting stuff that happens, especially now that you are a rude girl. You probably have, like, the best, like, people watching experience of anyone there. What's, like, one of the most interesting things you've seen within the past few months? Like, at a club? Mm -hmm. Like, out at a venue. Ooh, people watching interesting thing i've seen uh well in el paso touch bar shout out to david lee um they he had his entire staff dress up as cholos for me mm -hmm. so when i came everyone had plaid shirts and tattoos on their face and all this stuff like that was that was really cool but thinking of just like a random occurrence um i don't know because i'm kind of I'm taking part in the awkward crazy things that mm -hmm. are happening so if something weird's going on i'm probably helping it 
happened. <laughs> Maybe you're just not a good people watcher. I remember one time distinctly, I was at a bar and I looked across the way. It was like late at night. It's about to close down. And there was a very drunk person sucking another man's nipples, like in oh, the corner. That's me. It was you. It I, was me. I yeah. Was the whole time. Except I wasn't drunk. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just stuff like that. It's like, if I was drunk, I would not have clocked this. I wouldn't have noticed it. Mm. You know, it's like the little things. Yeah, I'm usually the one sucking nipples. And I do all this oh. sober. That's what they think the amazing thing is. I do the most craziest shit sober. You yeah. know what I mean? They wouldn't be able to handle you if you weren't. Yeah. Like, imagine <laughs> if I was drunk and I had a microphone. Yikes. Yeah. In trouble. <laughs> you would have died a local girl. Period. <laughs> <laughs> so, but before Drag Race, you were, you did get your BFA. You wanted to be on Broadway. And unfortunately, they didn't shake out. But do you still have plans to like get on Broadway, because obviously people like Jinx have shown that like, it's still a possibility. Yeah. Or has your goal shifted entirely? No, um, I'm not training currently. Like my voice, like like say a Jan or a Laguna Blue, like they're vocalists. I'm not. I don't consider myself a vocalist. So I feel like in that regard, Broadway isn't necessarily my lane. But I think I can handle Broadway. In like, I want to have my own one woman show, like John Leguizamo did, called Mambo Mouth or like um, Sexaholic. He had these one woman, one person shows, and he held an audience a broadway theater by himself for like two hours and he was tony nominated so like i can see myself in that lane and john leguizamo is a big inspiration of mine so mm -hmm. that i can see myself doing that in that sense as far as being in a broadway show i'm okay not being in i mean i did wig loose i mean what more could you ever want right <laughs> i should have a star on the hollywood walk of fame i, I was to, in wig loose period i need to go to the tonys like if we don't perform at the tonys this year i don't know what's going yeah. on <laughs> It's really interesting you say that. I you're, I don't know a lot of people whose biggest inspiration in drag is John Leguizamo, but here we I are. know, right? Well, that's what's so interesting because my drag is, you know, I feel like part of my criticism of fans even uh, before the show was like, I don't get it. But like my drag is inspired by like Mrs. Doubtfire, John Leguizamo and Chi Chi Rodriguez from mm -hmm. Tuang Fu, Eddie Murphy's Rasputia. Like I'm all those characters. Like that's how I see my drag. And like it is a character for me, you know? And I don't think people are used to like character personalities mm -hmm. in that sense. Cause usually personalities on drag race, it's just who they are, which it is who I am. But as titties is like amped up to a hundred because she's yeah. like character. I'm an actor at the end of the day. I, I definitely get the uh the John Leguizamo inspiration though, especially like in your confessionals, you're crying. And I was just like, little Latin boy in drag, why are you crying? Well, Menudo was... broke up. Oh, they said, so you would be a great, um, the white person in that, in that movie, you'd be great for that Patrick role. Patrick Swayze? Yeah! You, you know every little bit about John Leguizamo, but you forgot Patrick Swayze's name. <laughs> <laughs> Is he dead? Huh? He died, right? He did, yes. Oh, him and Miss Garfi are hanging out. <laughs> yeah, just they're looking down on us now. <laughs> they're mad as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> talking shit. Just getting read by two drag queens. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway. Was Patrick Swayze actually in the movie Ghost? Wasn't that him? Yeah, that was him too. Yes, with Demi Moore. Yeah, art becomes life, right? He's a ghost. Oh yeah. my God, full <laughs> circle, circle of life. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut so much of this. I don't want the Patrick Swayze stands to come for oh us. Oh my God, those are real? That's a thing? <laughs> probably. Oh God, I My grandma's it. one of them, but she probably doesn't watch my content. But Drag Race actually wasn't your first taste of fame because prior to it, you've had a, some smaller acting roles including being an extra in AJ and the Queen, and you were in full drag on Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> Probably your first time in drag, in confessionals. Do you think Legends of the Hidden Temple ironically actually helped you get ready for Drag Race? Well, I did that on purpose. So at the time, I had done a dating show called um, Hashtag Dating No Filter, mm -hmm. and I was out of drag for the date, and then I was in drag for the second half of the date. So I kind of got my dose, of my toes dabbled in reality that way mm -hmm. the next year i was like okay what am i gonna do next i was in the running for supermarket sweep um what's the one with nicole buyer wipeout mm -hmm. wipeout and legend of the hidden temple but all three shows wanted me so i was like which one do i want to do i had to pick because i couldn't do all three or all two mm -hmm. um so i was like which one is most similar to drag race and legend of the hidden temple had a confessional aspect to it so i was like if i do that legend of the hidden temple i get to be in confessional and feel what that feels like to prepare if I was ever on Drag Race. Mm -hmm. So I picked Legends of Hidden Temple and it was exactly that. So I was like, um, but except in my confessional there, I was in drag. So I was a little more amped up. But I was still amped up in Drag Race too, out mm -hmm. of drag. But um, it really did prepare me for Drag Race. I was like, I did it for that reason. So it felt really cool. What was your team name? 
my team name. I will wear the silver snakes, but we silver call snakes. ourselves the Cointara Mamas because we're here to win Cointaras. Oh, Cointara Mamas. <laughs> yeah, if, if you guys go to Selena, if you want to dress up for the occasion, you could dress up like the Cholas like they did in El Paso. Mm-hmm. Or you can dress up in your silver snake shirts. Yes. So, yeah, Do you remember, did you watch Legends of the Hidden Temple? When I was younger. I didn't yes. watch your season because it was it was only on for like one like two episodes. Yeah, right? and it was on the CW, which is like so random. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, you can find it on CW.com. You can watch it. But um, yeah, Legends of the Hidden Temple, I remember watching when I was little, like, I'll never get to be on that show. And mm-hmm. she was on it. Well, like, one of the people that was on the show with you, there was these people that it was like their dream to be on the show. Oh, and you were just there literally just <laughs> they, for the hell of it. They hated us. It was like Drag Race, how Sugar and Spice were just there to have fun. Uh-huh. And then we were all so competitive to win. It was the same dynamic. Like, those girls wanted to win so bad. And me and my friend were just like, <laughs> <laughs> having fun making good TV. You're just trotting. No, yeah, period. Yeah. Absolutely. During your time on the show, you lip synced a lot. Mm-hmm. How did it feel bottoming that much? Mm. Have you ever bottomed that much in your life? You know, when I was doing meth before I was sober, a lot of bottoming, yes. Um, was it ready for that curveball? And, and about like four or five guys at one time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't do math children mm-hmm. um yeah it was it was hard to be quite honest it sucked because it just makes you feel like oh i suck i'm not good what mm-hmm. am i doing here it means it makes you feel mm-hmm. like shit i imagine that it's very like demoralizing especially for you because you come from la and not only did, were you a regular performer in la but you performed in some of like the iconic bars because you won the project drag competition at mickey's and mm-hmm. you're performing alongside people like morgan and raven and you're making this name for yourself like, what was it like going from that to Drag Race and all of a sudden hearing these critiques and mm-hmm. placing so low each week? Well, you, not too much. Um, just kidding. <laughs> um, no, like, you go to the show thinking, oh, I'm going to slay this. I'm not going to be in the bottom. Mm-hmm. I'm never lip syncing. I think I have a video of me saying, bitch, I'm winning the crown. I'm never going to lip sync. I, I was just like Lucy before I got on the show mm-hmm. uh, in the best way. But um, it's like in the good way, not the bad in way. In the best way, yes. Um, so when I got there and I was lip syncing, what, you know, there's two sides to there's two sides of the coin. A, I feel like shit. This sucks. I'm the worst fucking drag queen in the world. Everyone mm-hmm. hates me. Um, then there's well, I have an opportunity to perform and show the world what I do best and how I make my money back at home. Because we don't in our I mean in my everyday life before I don't have to interview Love Connie to make my money. Right. You know what I mean. <laughs> but on Drag Race I did. So like. Lip syncing is what I do. So it felt, I had to like change my mindset and be like, this opportunity to make the most of this moment, you know, and fucking slay as much as you could. Did you feel like a pressure though? Because you were friends with like all these Rue girls and you did have like that name back home. Did that add like a layer of pressure to you? Like you needed to show out and represent mm-hmm. LA? Well, I'm also representing LA alongside like, Sasha Colby. So already the bar is like right. here. <laughs> But I always, like, you know, I met Sasha. I didn't know Sasha's, like, hype before when I met her. We, like, met at the gig after COVID. And, like, we would work together all the time. She's my good Judy. So when I went there, I was like, bitch, it's me and Sasha. Let's go. And then, you know, I didn't realize Sasha was, like, that famous. And, like, legit. So I was like, oh, yikes. So it, it did feel that way when I was there. I was like, okay, well, I can't. I don't stand a chance next to Sasha. But I'm going to do my best to represent the way I, I can. And I feel like I, I did a good job. I know you're talking about the LA girls in the season. You exclude Sugar and Spice. How do you feel about oh. them claiming LA? Well, that's why I was so um, mean to them in the beginning, in the first episode, when I was like, "You're not from LA." I was, mm-hmm. I was very like, I had a lot of pride because my entire package was a uh, West Coast representation. Mm-hmm. So I came in like, "Who are these girls thinking they're LA?" So when I was very angry at them in the beginning, but when they were quickly like, "Oh no, we're not from LA. We're from New York," I was like. Oh, you don't claim it like I do. Okay, work. <laughs> but then also you realize oh, yeah. sugar and spice is so cute and they're just there to have fun. So yeah. it w- I was very intense at first and then it disappeared halfway through that episode. You took a breath. You're like, I don't need to let loose right now. Correct. Like, it's okay. Yeah. I'll let loose later. <laughs> let loose later. Yeah. <laughs> let loose later. I think that's a good mantra. Mm-hmm. Let loose later. Yeah. Like for when you're in traffic and, you know, road rage comes up, just, I'm going to let loose later. Yeah. <laughs> There's a time and place to let loose. Yeah. Pick your battles. <laughs> If you're the queen of the thunder, that is. If, yeah, asterisk, if you're the queen of the thunder. <laughs> not everyone can let loose. Correct. But I feel like a lot of people, like I said, you did build that name for yourself and a lot of the stuff, a lot of the reasons you did, we didn't really get to see on the show. Like you said, your drag is not interviewing Love Connie. It's not doing rusicals. And I feel like a lot of the lip sync songs you were given probably aren't things that are in your wheelhouse. I've seen you, I've seen you perform live and like you're very energetic. You imbue like senses of like comedy and surprising, surprising elements. What can people actually expect from a Selena show? Mm. Well, I feel like I, I'm i very fun on the microphone. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I'm really fun on the microphone. I feel like that's how I win people over. So then when I go to perform, it's just an added bonus that I'm fucking sickening. But like my numbers are usually like campy comedy mixes and like I'm an actress at the end of the day. So I have a lot of spoken word and a lot of I'm telling a story through my numbers. So like when some places ask for like a high energy number and they just want me to perform, um, you know, Who's That Girl by Rihanna? Who's that chick? Mm. I'm like, no, I want to like tell a story. I want to give drama. I want to give theater. That's really what I get, live for. Yeah. Which is why I feel like I did really well in those weird ballads, you know, like kept getting, running up that hill and then like the Celine Dion, like mm-hmm. I can act in a moat, which I love, which yeah. was fun, <laughs> but um, I, I love telling a story. Yeah. You did do a lot of acting and emoting, but I think the one that's the most interesting to me was Little Nas X, because you were also given a very like, more like ballad-esque performance, mm-hmm. very like emotional, to a song that's more upbeat. What was your thought process? We're going into that lip sync. I'm about telling the story. You got to tell the story. If mm-hmm. you're lip syncing, you got to tell the story. So I'm going to tell the story. And the story of that song is really sad. It's the boy who wants to be loved and like find his forever love. And that's what he really wants. And um, it's just so weird that it's to that beat because mm-hmm. it doesn't, they don't match up together. So it looks weird when I'm moting. But I feel like if you take the beat out of there and you just like did it as a monologue, yeah. it would be perfect, you know? So. It gave if, if, someone, if someone could edit the performance to an acapella version, yes, please. No, honestly, please do that. It, and it would, I would win Tonys. Yeah. I would win Emmys. Like with that lip sync, though, do you think you would have made that same choice if it wasn't Spice you were lip syncing against? Do you think your mm-hmm. performance for that song would have been different based off who you were lip syncing against? No, I would have done the same thing. Same that's thing. how I would have done the song. Um, yeah, that's how I would have done the song. I was actually scared because Spice, everyone was laughing because Spice was so hilariously mm-hmm. doing Spice. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going home because everyone, was, even Rue was like laughing at Spice. Mm-hmm. So I thought I was going to go home that episode from that lip sync. But then when the Spice did, I said, whoop, thank God. Thank yeah, God. Well, Spice is fun to watch, but it was like drunk girl at the bachelorette party yeah. that they, <laughs> they immediately kick out. It's very Spice. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> but I was really scared. Oh, and the hate from that was horrible. Everyone was like, you should have went home. I was like, Spice, your fans. Over Spice? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I feel like people are entitled to their opinions, mm-hmm. but I feel like sometimes the fans are not even honest with themselves. Yeah. I think there's a little it's like, delusion. I get people come up to me at, like, bars and stuff, and they say, I, I really wish you would have went further in the competition. I'm like, thank you. But then some people are like, you should have, Jasmine should have went home in that lip sync. And I'm like, now nah, I know you're lying. Ugh. The drag delusion doesn't stop at drag queens. I think it honestly, it permeates through the fan base even yeah. more at times. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But I know like your time on the show, you were like very frustrated with the way a lot of things panned out. And even leaving the show, you had an emotional conversation with Monet after the show. Like, what was that like? I did. I did. You called Monet for emotional support after the show. Yeah. And like, she was just like, welcome to Drag Race. <laughs> well, I called Monet before I went and all she said, this is all she said. She said, be yourself. Just be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. That's all that matters. Just be yourself. Let yourself shine through. So I was. I went to the show and I was myself. And myself was crying. Myself felt played. Myself felt all these feelings. When I came back and told Monet, she was like, yeah, welcome to Drag Race, but at mm-hmm. least you were so- yourself. And I was like, you're right. I was myself. I, I can't say I wasn't my, not myself on the show. And then sibling Rob always said, I'll give you something to cry about. No, period. <laughs> <laughs> but like, regardless of how things shook out, it's a, a very far journey from like where you came from. Because at one point, in like your late teens, early 20s, you were living out of a shopping cart. Yeah, I was homeless for a month and I had all my belongings in a Bed Bath & Beyond shopping cart. Was it like a nice shopping cart though? Two shopping carts. Two shopping carts, Thank bougie. You. Bed Bath & Beyond shopping cart. Oh, it wasn't like an old rickety Walmart one. No, 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 no. The wheel still worked. It was nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that, well, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too bad. I, I, I would say you can probably get like an Aldi's one, but you get to put a deposit down for those. Oh my. Yeah, at Don't least at least you had the Bed Bath and Beyond. I was I was living all yeah. right, high the high life as mm-hmm. they say. Um, that's what life is when you're doing meth in Hollywood at 19. So mm-hmm. that's where my drug use and my addiction got me to. And then I, I moved to an apartment, and it wasn't any better. I was like infested with bed bugs and like cockroaches, and I was sleeping in a Lazy Boy recliner, sleeping. I was never sleeping, laying in one. And yeah, it was just a sad, sad life that I had found myself in. And then that's why I got sober. It was just pathetic and. That's what happens when you do meth. But in all seriousness, like you really did come up, come like a long way coming from like living out of shopping carts and even before Drag Race, because even before that, you went from that to like rubbing shoulders with celebrities. Mm-hmm. So take us to that journey. Take us from living out of a shopping cart up until hanging out with celebrities. Mm. Um, so I got sober 
And then in sobriety, there, there's a big sober community in LA. It's huge. Like every everyone, if you're in a room with five people, four of those people are sober probably in LA. Uh, it's so big and so supportive and so encouraging. And they, uh, they, being sober is all about being of service. It's all about giving back and like helping someone else. So I was involved with a lot of charity events and that got me in touch with a lot of, um, opportunities to showcase my talents because they need people to perform at these events to make to raise money so i would perform at these events for free and like give my time and talents and then from there uh, that got me into drag and that's why i started doing drag i was doing drag for the best in drag show it's this big um charity event that happens in la every year and then uh from there i was starting to do drag in the clubs and uh I was doing the competition with Raven and Morgan, Project mm -hmm. Drag 4, and one of the nights, Frankie Grande was the judge for the competition. I ended up winning that night. And then two days later, I was at a meeting, and Frankie was in the back row. And I said, hi, I'm Miss Titties from the competition, the pregnant Virgin Mary who gave birth on stage. That was me, because that's what I did mm -hmm. <laughs> that night. And um, he was like, oh, wow. And then we were best friends ever since. And so, you know, getting to be friends with Frankie, like we're sober sisters. And then of course his life is lavish and fun and exciting and he knows all these people. So I've gotten to like meet people through him and like, um, we're just like running town. And now that I'm a drag race girl, it's like Frankie and the Rue girl is friends. And it's like, it's so fun. Like, we do all these things together. And, it's, <laughs> and we're like the little, you know, celebrity yeah. babies. I think a lot of people didn't realize like how good of friends you are with Frankie. Like, and whenever he showed up on Drag Race, did you know he was coming? Uh, I had no idea who was going to be there. And when um, they gave us who the celebrities were going to be for the interview challenge, I just started crying because I was like, my best friends are going to be here. And like, I've been feeling, I was in the bottom and I was getting knocked down. So I was feeling down on myself. So to know that he was going to be there was like, Arr! it was exciting. Mm -hmm. But I was crying because I was like, oh my God, a piece of home is finally here. I won't feel so like crazy. But um, they wouldn't let me see him. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say like, how frustrating was it to know that Frankie Grande's there? And he's, then you had to, you love Connie instead of him. It, it wouldn't have been fair if I got to interview Frankie, and I'm totally aware of that. But I wish they would have gave me Charo. Like, I would have had so, I mean, I had fun with Connie. Connie was so much mm -hmm. fun. But I would have had so much fun with Charo, too. Yeah. Like, the two Latinas together, but I don't think it was in the card. <laughs> I just can't imagine, like, someone that I actually knew was on the show, and then they're just, like, off in another room. Mm -hmm. You can't get to see them. Yeah. But it is what yeah, it is. Say lovey. But I knew Ari, too. So when I saw Ari, I felt the same way, too. I was like, oh, hey, girl. And on, on top of you being friends with Frankie Grande, what a lot of people don't know is that he was actually with you that night that you had your sexual escapade dressed up as pregnant Mrs. Claus. Yes! It was at Raven Simone's birthday party. Again, because you're rubbing shoulders with celebrities. <laughs> and it was a really fun story. You're hanging out with Frankie Grande, Shangela, Raven Simone's there. A little person that was drunk coming out of a cake. Yeah, like, yeah. As amazing as your story was with the Mrs. Claus, I want to know about the rest of the night. What was going on? Walk us through... <laughs> That night. That night, I was doing a Christmas show, Christmas drag show with Quesadilla in LA. Quesadilla is a big queen in, in mm -hmm. LA. And um, she she invited me to do her show. And I was a pregnant Miss Claus, and I had performed a version of One from a chorus line. One singular sensation. But instead, I changed the lyrics to Juan singular sensation. It was about my baby Juan that I was going to mm -hmm. have. So I was like, this pregnant Christmas number I did. I was so stupid. But... um. Frankie was like, hey, do you want to go to this party with me? I was like, sure, I'm in drag. He's like, perfect, you'll fit right in. And it was Beecher's Madhouse is what that event was called. And Beecher's Madhouse is known for having like circus acts and like um, small people performing as a uh, celebrity. There's like a mini Ariana there. There's a mini like, um, uh, who's the guy from Freddie Mercury? There was a mini Freddie Mercury there. And um, it was it was just madness. And then I was like, oh, there's Raven Simone. He's like, Frankie's like, yeah, it's her birthday. And I was like, oh, that's where we are, work. And uh, there is this hot piece of daddy over there on the side looking at me. And that whole uh, story I told on Drag Race about mm. the comedy challenge was completely true. I couldn't reach. He was so tall. His hole was up here. I was down here. I went upstairs to get my heels and he wasn't there when I came back. It's literally what happened. It's honestly good that you were sober because like there's a lot going on. And a drunk mind would not have been able to keep all those details still. One thousand percent. So you get to keep that memory forever. Always. Every um, memory. But obviously, like, even, like, stuff, like, all these, like, Christmas gigs and stuff, like, you're booked for a reason. And I feel like with your performances, you put a lot of, like, enthusiasm and heart into your numbers that a lot of queens don't and probably can't. And I feel like that really showed during the Rusical. And that was the episode you were in the bottom and you were sent home, both of which I didn't agree with. Why do you think you went home that episode? I don't know. I don't know. I would love to know. If you have an answer, I would love to know. 
Uh, it's just it's just how the cards played out, you know. Mm-hmm. And Rue said it. You know, it was interesting to watch the um, the finale, the final four episode when Rue was like, "I made it my mission this season to send a girl home every episode." Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Oh, there is the answer. that." I think that was the answer. Just because someone had to. Someone had to go home. Like I don't know how everything works, but I'm like the fact that the two people lip syncing to a ballad, which is like a lot of face, a little drama, happens to be the two people with the most ridiculous gloves. I'm like, this smells like a setup. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like you're in the bottom because they want to see you lip sync to a ballet with those giant hands. That's why I'm just like, they're like, someone has to be in the bottom. We want to see this lip sync. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my uh, shut the fuck up era. <laughs> you are you, you shut the fuck up era because you did have a little bit of beef publicly. We never, you, <laughs> you made an announcement in front of a live audience telling Ross Matthews to eat your ass. And then you peppered a word on there that I can't say for legal reasons. Yeah. Or I'll get canceled. You but, can't but, say it. Yeah, I know, I know. I can't. But it seems like you, you did patch it up. Like, how did, yeah. what was that conversation like? I, I messaged him on Instagram. And then um, I was reaching out to people who knew him. I was like, how can I get in contact with him? Because I don't know if he saw my message. And then he called me. And then he was just like, I get it. I love you. It's fine. I'm a fan. Like, I understand. And he was very graceful. That was my feelings. If I, if I could go back and not do it, I would have never done it. Oh, it's well, not worth. Well, we're glad you did. That's a moment. But honestly, though, like you did patch it up. Things are good now. Mm-hmm. Just some, you know, you let loose just for a moment. Yes, I but let loose. How liberating was it standing up to the fourth most important person on the judges panel? Like you're being messy. You're being messy. You're being really messy. <laughs> you're being really messy. Um, no, I was just in my feelings, mm. and it felt personal. And yeah. I told this to Ross. I was like, it just felt personal because he said, you know, he's like, I know you. We've worked together, and so I was like, oh, so. It's coming from that place. It just felt personal. So I, that's where my feelings were coming from. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I had a hard time watching the show back because I still had all my feelings from the show. Mm-hmm. So I would watch the show and have my feelings come up. Um, so it was just a combination of crap. And I should have just saved those comments <laughs> for a bedroom with my friends. You know what I mean? <laughs> I will say, though, that like Drag Race, it is like an emotionally, psychologically taxing thing. Mm-hmm. Even for me, I was only on it for like six episodes. And I was like... <laughs> not bad yeah it's not bad thank you you're very kind (laughs) but okay but going off that though your finale outfit you were dressed in this dress it was a big hoop skirt and the back of it was like a cut out of a cake was that a reference to ross eating no i had that dress made for top four episode Mm. for a best drag extravaganza Mm. i was going to come out on the runway quinceanera season 15 um and then i was going to turn around and walk off the runway and the the cake slice was going to be there so uh it's giving very much eat cake honey try mm-hmm. to taste these cakes and then when i was gonna wear it for finale i was like of course <laughs> people are gonna think that that was because of that but I, it wasn't i was fortunate to be in the audience during the finale and that's what i thought i was like oh this is so funny no, it wasn't. because I, well, I knew too that you had patched it up so i thought yeah. oh this is like a cheeky little callback but it's kind of like raw i'm I very remember. i'm excited for the day when i'm allowed to like entertain the joke you know what i mean because yeah. people can like bob has like mm-hmm. eat my ass is going like people are saying yeah. it all the time now and like I can't say it right now it's but there's a day in the future where we're all gonna laugh at it and mm-hmm. me and Ross are gonna do a track together called yeah. Eat My Ass <laughs> yeah would you I, would you I, perform I, it at your brunch if uh, I wrote a song called Eat My Ass I'd have to do the censored version cause again that one word oh, Eat My know, Peach Eat well it's not the ass oh. word it's the other one. Oh, you're right you'll do the kids bop version I'll be Eat My Ass Friend <laughs> yeah the kids bop <laughs> version <laughs> Eat My Ass Friend now available at Walmart. That's what I should have said. I want to eat my ass, bucko. <laughs> Wait, that's a great invitation. <laughs> I would do it. Oh, goodness. What a mess. <laughs> I feel like but that outfit, along with like a lot of your outfits like on the show, I, I feel like you simultaneously put a lot of thought into your outfits, but also mm-hmm. like not enough at times. Do you th- which mm. one do you think it is? No, there was a lot of thought. There was no time for execution. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's what it was. Like, you know, I went I went to designers and I was like, I have this sickening idea where I'm gonna put the street lamps and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be like overall and go. <laughs> and then they gave it to me and I was like, the street signs were sickening is what I, I wanted, but then this lamp, I was like, oh, shit, it's not what I wanted, <laughs> but I have to wear it. So yeah. it was like that was a lot of the time was like great ideas, execution, because there wasn't a lot of time. And I feel like I was dumping a lot of designers. I feel like I went to some designers. Also, I didn't feel like I was asking that much, to be honest. Like, I was like, this is my concept. Go. Mm-hmm. And then I got what I got. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Yeah. I tried. I could have just worn beautiful gowns. 
I said, I said it for the longest time, like I have great ideas, just not good execution. And I stand yeah. by that. And that's and that's valid. That yeah. is valid. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Do you think that like your time on Drag Race will inspire a lot of young queens who have bad taste? <laughs> no. I think it's gonna inspire queens who have great ideas to uh, do better than I did. <laughs> You're an example of like what not to do. Yeah. It's like when an ex-convict goes and does like a speech at a school, like don't be like me. Yeah, exactly. Like I was that. I was that. Yeah. I was a PSA um, for the children out there. And that, I mean, to be honest though, I feel like there's gonna be a chola drag queen out there who has these great concepts, or not even chola, anyone. There's gonna be a great drag queen out there who has this amazing idea, and they're gonna be like, okay, like as titties had a great idea, we have to make sure that it's also this and that and fitted and this, and mm -hmm. they're gonna be great. Yeah, <laughs> they're like making the outfit and they look at a picture of you, they're like, bring the waist in. <laughs> yeah, exactly, well, no, 1,000%. It. And yeah. had I done that, maybe I wouldn't have been in the bottom, you know? Yeah, well. <laughs> so. But that outfit, the street sign look, I feel like it was one of the like, most iconic looks. It is the look you won the golden boot for. I do think there are some looks that also could have won the golden boot, but. Say their names. I don't think. What? I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just want to say that. Marsha, Jax, and oh! Nisha, you mean half the cast? What do you mean? I don't know. But I feel like your outfit was the most iconic of like the quote bad looks from the season, <laughs> which I feel like is like the golden boot. I feel like it's not just about an outfit being bad, but about being memorable. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you like really encapsulated that. Thank you. But you know, but, it's so funny because I feel like who made that memorable were Mistress and Bob and these people who were like low-key shading me, mm -hmm. they made it a moment. Like, the street lamp probably wouldn't have, people wouldn't have even remembered it if people weren't, like, talking about it mm -hmm. so very often, mistress. So yeah. thank you, girl. I was say because I, I presented the golden boot, and they wouldn't even tell me, because obviously everything's under wraps. They don't even tell me who the winner is. Oh, they, they didn't tell they, you? No, they give me, like, a list, and they have me read each one. You read every one? Not every one. No, they give me, like, a handful of looks. Oh. But of them, like, I've forgotten most of them except for yours, because, again, like, I think yours has, like, staying power. I think it is that that iconic of a look from the season. I think of all the looks on the season, it's going to be one of the ones people remember. That's so funny. It's immortalized. Well, yeah. People but tag me in street lamps all the time. As far as the golden boot goes, do you think you should have won the golden boot? Um, I accept the golden boot proudly because I didn't win nothing. So <laughs> it's a nice little little uh, so moment. Do you agree with getting the golden boot for that look? No, I have worse looks. What do you think you should have won it for? I could have won it for the palm tree look. The palm tree one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like, it was what it was. The palm tree one, I feel like you said earlier, great ideas, not the best execution. I fucking love that idea. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, really? Yeah. I mean, the general concept. I think, too, that like, if you walked out in that outfit at a show, I would have loved it. Yeah, right? I think it's, too, it's like, I think it's drag race. people have different mindsets. Yeah. You know, like. People want Drag Race to be fa like America's Next Top Model. Yeah. I'm just like, everything looks to be more fun. Not everything needs to be a runway. Yeah. Runway. Overall, I, I do feel like people, they kind of hate on some of your looks a little bit too much. I feel like with some looks, like even like the street lamp look or like the money tree, you know, like some could say it's bad and others, I could say that like, they just don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. The judges so didn't that, get it. And I, I feel like you have a perspective for that. Like you just kind of get stuff. Yeah. With that, we're going to move on to a segment called, is it really bad or do people just not get it? Ooh. I'm going to show you some looks. Some <gasps> some looks in fashion, and I want you to tell me, is it actually a bad look, or do people just not get it? Okay. First up, we have Ashley Tisdale at the premiere of The Princess Diaries 2. Oh no, you see, this is not Ashley Tisdale, this is actually Princess Poppy at the premiere of RuPaul's oh. Drag Race. Come on, Maddie. <laughs> and it is fashion. You think people just don't get it? You no, know, uh, yeah, people just don't get it. I think she was setting, um, she did what I did, where she's like starting something new, Great idea, execution a little weird, but mm. people took from this and built fashion empires. Like the feather boa industry blossomed from this moment. Mm. The um, little spaghetti talk tank yeah. took off from here on out. Long sleeve shirts and jeans, bitch everywhere. Ashley Tisdale walked so the fashion industry could run. Correct. We, next up we have Bjork at the 73rd Academy Awards. Now, people just didn't get this because I recreated this look. Um, and this is very popular. It set trends. Hello, it's very street lamp tees. Mm. She's exact. It's the exact same thing, baby. She, you know, did you ever watch, watch White Chicks? Mm -hmm. They wore this dress on there. True. Um, I bet you Marlon Wayans is writing a movie right now where he's gonna be wearing a street lamp. <laughs> People just didn't get it. Next up, we have Kim Petras at the 2021 Met Gala. What does she do? 
oh, is this the horse thing? Mm -hmm. You think it's a bad look? Or you think people just don't get it? I think it's fun. The ponytail is so fun. It's, I didn't even never even seen this work. It's I like it. I think people just don't get it. Yeah. Was this the camp one? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I think this was whenever she was she was had just put out her song, her horsey song. She has a horsey song. Yeah, and that's probably what she was promoting. I could be wrong. Hmm. Maybe. Oh. Hmm. Horse. Um, you know what? I say props because you know moments like this go viral. People remember it. Mm -hmm. Street lefties. People just don't get it. Yeah, I will say I think people don't get it, but I'm also not the biggest fan of like the horse head. I'm okay with it. But well, Kim Petras is on thin. Didn't Cal Kylie just wear a giant like lion on her dress? Something like that. Yeah, like hello. She set the trend. Next up, we have Nicki Minaj. I'm gonna say Ninky Mean Judge. Nikki. <laughs> my, my brain is going. Ninky Mean Judge. Ninky Mean Judge. Next up, we have Nicki Minaj at the 2011 BMAs. What is going on? That's a great question. Oh. You know what? People just. I don't get it. But it's Nikki, so you don't come for the queen. Mm. This was in her like Barbie like pop era where she was really experimenting yeah. with like fun little things. She was I in her care. Jiggly Caliente era. It's giving very Jiggly Caliente, yeah. yeah. It's very central pay. Um, I just don't think people get it, and I'm one of those people. Mm. <laughs> he said, it, "You're one of those people." <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Cara Delevingne at the 2019 Met Gala. Oh, she was at the finale. This one was the camp Met Gala. This was camp Met Gala. Um, but was it a good look, or did people just not get it? No, I mean, no. I don't know. I don't get it. I you think it was a bad look? Yeah, it's just a bad look. And that's okay. Sometimes we have bad looks. I get that. Yeah. I like everything from the neck down. It's just that crown I don't understand. <laughs> it's a lot. There's like bananas in it. It's yeah. A lot. It's a lot. But I mean, if she told me it was like a thing mm. about her white heritage, I would have been like, oh, praise you, queen. Yeah. Work. For this one, I'm going to have to ask you to remove your bias for this one. Okay. <gasps> Clean slate. Okay. Never seen it before. This is Lady Gaga at the 2015 Oscars in the giant red gloves. <gasps> do you think it's a bad look or do you think people just don't get it? People just don't get it. This is iconic. The giant I've red never, gloves. I've, I've never even seen this look. No? <laughs> to be quite honest, I've never seen this. I was hoping to check your inspiration. Work. Uh, I, I mean, I, I saw gloves like this on Amazon. Mm. I'm sure she's not wearing Amazon gloves. Mine, the ones inside were Amazon. But, um, yeah, I don't think people get it. It's very sexy, a glove, a red a red glove like this. It gets very, like, we're creating prolapses in here. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's a little too, like, dish gloves? Like a little rubber bit. Rubber gloves? That was my first idea for the glove runway, was to be a dishwasher. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's been fun. But I was like, Ugh, it's everything so Latin, Latino, Latino. Let me change it up and just be campy and silly. And, <laughs> and they put you in the bottom. Home. Yeah. Yeah, well, the next time you think twice. Yeah. All right, next up, this is, this is actually a couple's outfit. <gasps> Yeah, the denim. a famous couple's outfit. It is not. Oh. It's the other famous couple's outfit. This is from the 2022 Glamazon Prime runway of RuPaul's Drag Race, <gasps> Maddie Morphosis and Daddy Morphosis. Oh my god! Do you think this is a bad look, or do you think people just don't get it? Um, I think it was just a bad look. But Daddy Morphosis slayed. I was. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> you know, I think about this often because you know who you remind me of in this photo. I'm afraid to ask. Pearl. Pearl? Yes. Do you know the movie Pearl? Oh, I, I'm I, a star. I thought you meant Pearl from Drag Race. I was like, is there something oh, on my oh, face? No, no, not her. Not her. Not her. No, <laughs> not her. Um, which also, Pearl, if you're watching, you can fuck me. And he's, I'll suck you off so hard. Oh my God. Have you been seeing the photos? I have not. It's so hot. Ooh, okay. But yes, Pearl, the movie Pearl. Mm -hmm. I'm a star. That's what this reminds me of. So, yeah. Good job. I actually, and I did this before Pearl came out. So, exactly. Innovator. Yeah. What's her name? The girl who wrote that? I think she wrote the Barbie movie. Oh, yeah, was she really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's so all about women's empowerment. I love her. Yeah. She's so good. <laughs> I want to be in her movies uh, one day. Hey, manifesting that for you. God. Just putting your resume. You were like, I was on Legends of the Hidden Temple. And then? Kind of a big deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that is the last of my cards oh! and the last bit of time that we have today. No! I know. Oh. Well, 
Thank you so much for coming. So where can people find you outside of here? What do you have going on? What do you have coming up? Let the ca- people know you have a camera there or the wide camera, wherever you like. Oh, we like a wide one. Let me get nice and sexy. Um, so you can find, I'm going to be doing a, my own telenovela series called Amigas y Amores. And um, that's going to be coming out soon. Um, I'm going to be touring everywhere. I'm all around the country. Um, I want to come to Dublin. There's a guy I talked to on Instagram who's uh, in Dublin and he really wants to give me his finga and I'm very excited for that. Um, and yeah, just keep up the lookout for the titties. I have a lot of ideas, you know, and movies and things I want to do. Mm-hmm. Very excited. <laughs> What's your social's name? Socials, uh, my social worker. Um, that's <laughs> Carmen. De- <laughs> no, not your social worker. What What's your social like media handles? Oh, so, handles. At S Titties on Instagram and at Selena S Titties on Twitter. I finally got my Twitter back. You know, got hacked. Hey, yeah. I'm we're selling back. MacBooks. <laughs> yeah, so follow her on Twitter while we still can. Yeah. When this video comes out, Twitter might not be around anymore. But... Oh, I know, right? Very <laughs> that. But with that, it's the end of the episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in and join us next time whenever we have somebody else with titties, with titties, or maybe not. Or no, maybe no titties. Maybe not. Correct. Yeah, you know, we shake things up around here. Selena, no titties. Selena, no titties. <laughs> oh, a drag daughter. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. Thanks, guys. Till next time. Bye, Bye. y'all. Bye. <laughs>